Hello everyone, thank you for joining me for a few minutes. This video is just going to be a short reminder the, for Christians and for people who love the Bible and love the Word of God. I wanted to talk about what the literal definition of the Word means to me. And I believe this is very biblical. In John chapter 1, we hear about how the Word was God and was with God and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. This, that is the Word, of course, is Christ. And it says the Son of God, which is the word in the Bible, he says that all things belong to the Son. All things were made for him, through him, of him. They're made of him. They're made for him. They're made through him. And they're made by him. All things. Okay? And that includes every single word. You know, a wor words that we use in, in any language, anything we can even make up for a word or has ever been, is merely just a name of someone, something, something we're doing, some, a name of some kind of action, a name of some kind of verb, um, noun. In the name of Jesus Christ, that's the word, the word, the word. You will find the word that Christ is in every word. Because every word belongs to him, for it says all things, on earth and all things in heaven were made by him and for him. So I want you to think about that. And I ask you to, as you look around and, uh, and are able to read, write, talk to others, every single word you make actually has been made by him. And even the action of your speaking, you know, we like to say, well, about ourselves well i'm the speaker or you're the speaker no and i want to bring that to the forefront again because this was not exactly the way i was raised in the mormon church for 26 years my two years on my mission and throughout my 20s i was not really raised to see this although they did allude to it they didn't come out and just directly say it you know the lord god said i'm the lord god again in isaiah i can't tire of saying this for this was not the way i was taught I am the Lord God. There is no other. So that's one thing he said. There's no other. In Isaiah 45 and 46, 46 verse uh, 9 and 45, 5, 6 and 7. There is no other. And of course, in the Bible, it says every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord God. And this Lord God in the Old Testament said, there is no other. There's no other Lord God. And he said, and if that's not enough, there is none else. So besides the fact that there's no other Lord God, he wants you to know something. There is none else. That means there's no place else. There's no person else. There's no thing else. There's nothing else but God. That is the ultimate truth. And the reason why Jesus Christ said, love God with all your heart, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Now, he is being everyone, but that doesn't mean that anyone he is being is him instead. For he said, instead of what? You know, the Lord God, well, instead of what? Instead of who? There is none else, and I told you. Now, if you lose sight of that, when you look at every person, whether you agree with what they're doing or not, he is the power by which all things are made. And he is the maker. Hence, you know, the term meet your maker. You're not the maker. It is true you make, but the truth is, and he said, I am the truth. He's the maker. And that means the only free will that exists is his. And he gave you free will because he said in, in uh, Psalms 82, verse 6, and in the Hebrew, especially for Mormons and Latter-day Saints, as you believe the name of your Heavenly Father is Elohim, as you learn in your temple and, and in your lessons at church. Well, he said it right in the Hebrew. It says it right in the Hebrew, long before the Greek, long before the English. If you read Psalms 82, verse 6 in the Hebrew, he looked at everyone and says to everyone, have I not told you that you are Elohim? That means every one of you and collectively. For Elohim is singular and plural, not all. Because there needs to be an opposition in all things. And the opposite of 
singular is plural. So all you're going to find in the singular God is plurality, and all you're going to find in the plurality is the single God. Now, if there be a test, and of course, in the book of Job, we learn the tester is the devil. So you can't have a test without the tester or the testee. You are going to find out the tester, the testee, and the tested are one. All three, it is a triune truth just like the Godhead. They are one. Because it is written, when Jesus was tempted and tested, you know, by the tester, the devil, when he was fasting for 40 days, the tempter came to him and tempted him to prove himself. Said, if you be the Christ, jump over that cliff right there, the ledge, and your angels will catch you. Now he's tempting him, but he's also saying, prove it. Show me. Prove it. That's test it. See if you are. I'm going to test you and see if you're going to do that. It is written two places in the Bible. He responded to that, and he said that it is written, Thou shall not tempt the Lord your God. And remember, the Lord God, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord God. And the Lord God said, there is none else. So the ultimate truth, and Jesus said, I am the truth. So the ultimate Christ, the beginning and the end, is that all you have not tested anybody else but God. And you are not to do that. It is even written in the Old Testament, you do not test the Lord your God. And, it, and Jesus said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord your God. So when the, when the devil tries to use the word of God against Christ by saying, well, it is written. Jesus goes back and goes, well, it is written. Thou shall not tempt the Lord your God. I bear witness that the eternal truth, and Jesus said, I am the truth. So the eternal Christ, the truth of you, the eternal Christ, is Jesus Christ. And you are of that truth. Opposites are made of each other. You are of Christ, and Christ is of you. And if you deny it, here's one of the ways you deny it, if you do. Christians, I've heard many so-called Christians deny it all the time. The light of Christ is not in that one, because he's evil. That's not true. The light of Christ is in that one, but that one denies it, and so did you. And once you deny the light in anyone, you have denied it the light that Christ is. For he said, I am the light of the world. And he also testified in the New Testament again and said the same thing about you. You know, he didn't say, I am a light of the world. Although, you know, the light is a light, but not a light instead. Just a light? He said, you are the light of the world, so let your light so shine. He called you exactly what he is. And until you understand this, you have been denying Christ. We love Christ. We teach of Christ. We've cast out many devils in his name. We've taught in his name. We've done many marvelous works in his name. He said, many will say to him in that day, not a few, many will say, Lord, Lord, we've taught in your name. We've cast out devils in your name, did many marvelous works in your name. But what is in his name? This, that is the word, every. And you just saw him as Jesus instead of the Christ. Jesus is the Christ. He is the truth. He is the Lord God. But the Lord God said there is none else. So if you think Jesus is the Christ instead of someone else, the Lord God, who is Jesus Christ, will say instead of someone else, there is none else. And that's why you must love your neighbor as yourself. The devil will tempt you to deny the light in just one person because of their outer appearance. You go, oh, we don't judge by outer appearance. If you're judging by outer behavior, you're also judging by outer appearance. The Lord God can't behave that way. Yes, he can. It doesn't mean he is that person or this person or these groups of people instead. He is all and not anyone instead. And Satan wants you to worship him instead of someone else. But the Lord God says, there is none else. And when Jesus said, come, follow me, that is why Jesus Christ did not say, come, follow me instead. And because the Lord God, he's the Lord God. Instead of what? There is none else. But you watch these people on earth. They'll follow this man instead or that man instead. They'll call these people their prophets instead or that their prophet instead. 
and they're separating themselves from Christ. Because the ultimate truth is you and Christ are not separate. And that is eternal and always is anyway. That's why you can be separate, opposite. Opposites testify of each other. So either be hot or cold, not colder than hot or hotter than cold. He didn't tell you in the book of Revelations for that. He said, for they are neither hot nor cold. Oh, so that means they must be hotter than cold or colder than hot. Because that's lukewarm. Don't seek to be higher than low or lower than high. Don't seek to be the highest instead. For the Lord God will say, instead of what, there is none else. You didn't see me. You love me unconditional. Okay. You go, but there has to be a condition. He said, yes, and that is the condition, to love me in every condition. And those that know me and see me, see me in all. For I, it is the Lord God that lighteth every man that cometh into this world, the Bible says. And he is the doer of every action. He is the same yesterday, so he's the doer of everything that happened yesterday and was made yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Uh, not tomorrow, forgive me. Forever. Because the future, he doesn't say yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He says yesterday, today, and forever. He is the same. And the reason why is because tomorrow is something that is constructed, made by him. But the eternal truth is that yesterday, today, and forever are one. And that is what he uses to make future. All that is ever present before the ever present God. For he is omnipresent. That is why he doesn't have to be instead. He is omniscient. That's why he doesn't have to be instead and can walk the earth. And Jesus said, my father knows this, but I don't know this. Which one's going to be on my right or my left, sons of Zebedee? Only my father knows that. Yet Jesus is omniscient because he is the father, the eternal father, which is Elohim, which you all are. So beware of those who say, we have the authority instead, the priesthood instead. For the opposite of our group has the priesthood instead, our church has the priesthood instead, by their own religion, 2 Nephi chapter 2, verse 11, is we don't have the priesthood instead. And that is the opposite. We do have the priesthood instead, we don't. So to continue to stand on the earth and say that, Latter-day Saints, is an utter lie. Your own doctrine testifies of it. So either have the priesthood or don't have the priesthood. For without those who have the priesthood, could you not have the priesthood instead? And opposite, for those that don't have the priesthood, could you have the priesthood instead? That is because you will find you are both in the stead of each other. And all that is higher is made of all that is lower, and that's all you'll find in it. And in the end... When he gives you your grade, which means Zion in Hebrew, grade, the word grade. You want a grade on your test? Because life's a test, you want a grade? Well, it's not a coincidence that in Hebrew, the word grade means Zion, which is heaven on earth, which you will go to, for you will be born in heaven, and heaven will be on earth. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Is what is you have said is in you. By your own words, you will be condemned. And that is what you have said your opposite is. So, either be low or high, because ten feet high is ten feet low. Either be hot or cold. For two degrees hot, it's two degrees cold. And they're always testifying of each other because they are one. For heat just measure for all that is hot and all that is cold is just the measurement of one thing. Heat. And that's why they are two, because they are eternal one. Same thing with the Godhead. I testify of that and drop your judgments they say the fall of man occurred when Adam and Eve partook of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil they didn't partake of the knowledge of good or evil you keep acting like you know and the Lord works in mysterious ways and you are not to judge the mysterious ways he works in and it says Christ is all and in is in all. He works in mysterious ways. All of you are those mysterious ways. But you must see the mystery through the mist of darkness. That all the multiple particles of the mist, the water, the clouds, the fog, they're all held together by one air. And Christ is that which holds all things together. 
the Bible testifies all things, even what you call physical matter. And I testify of that. You cannot say that God is not omnipresent without the opposite. God is omnipresent. That is why he knows all things. And I testify to you in closing that he also knows what it is to have the knowledge, for all knowledge is his, the knowledge of even just being you. Because all belongs to him, including your life. Your life is his life. And he is the life. And that is true about each one of you. So love your neighbor as yourself. This is the royal law. Not the law and the prophets of the Old Testament. They're just called the law and the prophets. But the royal law, the royal law, the word in one decree, love one another. That is the purpose of every commandment. And to forgive everyone. Because the word every, Christ is the one, for he said there's none else. And the root word of every is spelt V-E-R, ver. It means the truth. And Christ said, I'm the truth. He is the truth in everyone. He's the ver in everyone. Amen.